Muy buenos días a todos y todas. Doy por inaugurada la audiencia número 13 del 185 periodo ordinario de sesiones de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, que lleva por título Situación del Derecho a la Identidad de Género y el Reconocimiento de los Vínculos Familiares de Personas del Mismo Sexo en Bolivia, y que fue solicitada por la Defensoría del Pueblo del Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia. Mi nombre es Julisa Mantilla Falcón, soy presidenta de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos y me acompaña la segunda vicepresidenta, la comisionada Margaret Ney McCauley, el comisionado Joel Hernández, relator para Bolivia, y la comisionada Roberta Clark, relatora para los derechos de las personas LGBTI. También se encuentran en la sala la secretaria ejecutiva Tania Renault, la secretaria ejecutiva adjunta para monitoreo María Claudia Pulido y el relator especial para la libertad de expresión Pedro Vaca. Quiero iniciar con un cordial saludo al Estado y también a la Defensoría del Pueblo y la Sociedad Civil. Les voy a explicar en estos momentos la distribución del tiempo. Vamos a iniciar con la participación de la Defensoría del Pueblo, que está acompañada de integrantes de la sociedad civil por 20 minutos. Luego el Estado eh, tendrá un tiempo de 20 minutos también, para luego la Comisión Interamericana por el mismo tiempo intervenir. Y luego haremos una segunda ronda de 12 minutos cada uno. Entonces, dicho esto, le doy la palabra a la Defensoría del Pueblo y la Sociedad Civil por 20 minutos. Buenos días, eh, señoras y señores miembros de, de la respetable Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. A nombre de la Defensoría del Pueblo de Bolivia, quiero agradecer el agendamiento de esta audiencia que tiene la finalidad de tratar dos temas importantes para las personas LGBTIQ+, en Bolivia. Eh, saludar también eh, a, la a los miembros de la Secretaría Ejecutiva, así como a los miembros de la Delegación del Estado, representada por el Procurador, señor eh, Wilfredo Chávez, y a todo el equipo técnico de esa distinguida entidad. Eh, pretendemos en este espacio eh, pues avanzar en la materialización de los derechos humanos de la población LGBTQ+, eh, y que en adelante se asuman eh, acciones proactivas y efectivas por parte del Estado. En mi calidad de defensor del pueblo del Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia, haré la exposición de los argumentos que fundamentan la solicitud y también harán uso de la palabra los ciudadanos Yavar eh, Castellón eh, y eh, Leonel Rivas, que ambos son activistas de colectivos que tienen que ver con la temática que ahora estamos eh, tratando. Para empezar la exposición, es importante comenzar también señalando que el Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia, en su Constitución Política del Estado, declara la igualdad y la no discriminación de las personas bajo ninguna causal o circunstancia. Por lo tanto, bajo este principio, no es posible pensar que existan sectores de la población que tengan restricciones y limitaciones en el disfrute y ejercicio de sus derechos fundamentales. En mayo del 2016, efectivamente, se promulgó la ley 807 de identidad de género que establece el procedimiento para el cambio de nombre propio, dato de sexo e imagen de personas transexuales y transgénero en toda documentación pública y privada vinculadas a su identidad. Si bien reconocemos eh, que Bolivia ha dado pasos importantísimos para garantizar la vigencia y ejercicio de los derechos humanos de las personas con diversa orientación sexual, expresión e identidad de género, desde la Defensoría del Pueblo observamos restricciones y limitaciones al ejercicio pleno de los derechos humanos de esta población, situación que ocurre porque Bolivia no ha adoptado en su derecho interno las consideraciones necesarias ajustadas a la amplia jurisprudencia emitida desde el sistema interamericano como la opinión consultiva 24 Baza 2017, referida al cambio de nombre, la identidad de género y los eh, derechos derivados de un vínculo entre parejas del mismo sexo. Estas circunstancias eh, las vamos a eh, eh, exponer en dos puntos. Eh, por un lado, eh, un tema referido a la obligación de garantizar eh, el derecho a la identidad de género por parte del Estado. Y por el, eh, por el otro, en un segundo tema, eh, sobre el reconocimiento de los vínculos eh, familiares que emergen de las uniones de parejas del mismo sexo. En el primer tema, respecto a la obligación de garantizar el derecho a la identidad de género por parte del Estado, 
reiteramos, eh, una vez promulgada la ley 807 de identidad de género en mayo del 2016, un grupo de as asambleístas nacionales promovieron una acción de inconstitucionalidad en contra de la norma. Realizado el trámite ante el Tribunal Constitucional Plurinacional, se emitió la sentencia 76 barra 2017, que determinó declarar eh, la inconstitucionalidad de un parágrafo, el parágrafo segundo del artículo 11 de la indicada ley. Este parágrafo, eh, pues, indica en una frase eh, textual, abre comillas, permitirá a la persona ejercitar todos los derechos fundamentales políticos, laborales, civiles, económicos y sociales, cierra comillas. Entonces, con esta eh, declaratoria de inconstitucionalidad de este segundo párrafo, lo que se ha logrado es restringir la aplicación de la norma únicamente al cambio de identidad, es decir, nombre propio, dato de sexo e imagen de las personas eh, transexuales y transgénero. La sentencia constitucional dispone además que respecto a los derechos de la, eh, de la población, eh, pues un debate eh, democrático que involucre a los actores e eh, instituciones de la sociedad en su conjunto, a, actores eh, públicos, privados y otras que así correspondan, ¿no? De acuerdo con lo que menciona la sentencia constitucional. Eh, para tratar, eh, obviamente, lo relacionado con el matrimonio o las uniones libres de personas del mismo sexo, entre otros temas, ¿no? Sobre este punto, si bien eh, conocemos que existen propuestas normativas trabajadas desde el órgano ejecutivo con organizaciones de la población, a la fecha no hay ninguna iniciativa legislativa favorable a la población eh, en trámite o consideración de la Asamblea Legislativa. Eh, octubre del año en curso, el Servicio de Registro Cívico, el CERESI, eh, ha registrado un total de 572 trámites de cambio de nombre eh, propio, dato de sexo e imagen de personas transexuales y transgéneros en nuestro país. Sin embargo, la Defensoría del Pueblo emitió un informe eh, defensorial en el que evidencia que tras eh, seis años de la promulgación de la ley 807 de identidad de género, aún existen entidades públicas y privadas, eh, prestadores de servicios públicos que no han adecuado su normativa interna para la tramitación eh, de cambio de nombre propio, dato de sexo, imagen de personas trans en los registros que maneja. Eh, la mayoría de estas corresponden a la seguridad social a corto plazo. Los testimonios que se han ido recolectando a partir de la acción defensorial manifiestan que en, en los establecimientos de salud han tenido problemas y limitantes administrativas para acceder a ciertas especialidades médicas como urología o ginecología por tener en los documentos eh, de identidad un dato de sexo distinto a la, a la, a la de los pacientes eh, habituales para estos servicios. En el ámbito de la educación, pese a que el Ministerio de Educación reguló el procedimiento para el cambio de nombre en documentos como títulos y certificaciones educativas, los testimonios dan cuenta que al momento de realizar el trámite ocurren una serie de complicaciones en las instancias departamentales, exigiéndoles documentos innecesarios y no establece, eh, que no están establecidos en la ley 807 de identidad de género, género demorando eh, la aplicación de esta norma eh, pues en meses para la, uh, para la obtención de los documentos que son necesarios eh, por estas personas. Por otro lado, eh, la adecuación de la normativa interna en las entidades estatales tampoco ha garantizado el ejercicio pleno del derecho a la identidad de género. Tal es eh, lo que ocurre en, en el Ministerio de Defensa, toda vez que la normativa que emitió para la búsqueda de la documentación de respaldo y por lo tanto proceder a la modificación de la, de la documentación personal, eh, además de ello, el, el numeral 12 del artículo 108 de la Constitución Política del Estado señala que son deberes, eh, entre otros, el prestar el servicio militar obligatorio en el caso de los varones, ¿no? Entonces, en ese contexto, las personas transmasculinas que no pueden acceder a la libreta de, por el costo del trámite de, de redención 
y la ausencia de mecanismos para el cumplimiento de esta obligación se ven excluidas de ser parte del servicio público por incumplimiento de este requisito. Esa es una grave limitación. Los derechos humanos eh, son iner inherentes a las personas sin importar ningún criterio de distinción o atributo que pueda tener ese ser humano, además de ser interdependientes entre sí. Por ello, nos preguntamos de qué serviría tener un documento de identidad, cédula de identidad, si este no va a garantizar que las personas trans puedan ejercitar su derecho a la salud, educación, trabajo y sean tratadas y reconocidas conforme su identidad de género ante la sociedad en instancias públicas y privadas en igualdad, en igualdad de condiciones? Por lo relatado, podemos señalar que Bolivia cuenta con una norma que ha permitido que se adecue la identificación personal conforme la identidad de género de las personas trans. Pero esta norma ha quedado en muchos casos en una simple retórica, pues no se ha establecido un mecanismo para el seguimiento y monitoreo para su cumplimiento. Esta falencia restringe el ejercicio de, de la identidad al mero, al mero formalismo del documento de identidad y limita el ejercicio del derecho, de los derechos humanos y del derecho a la libre personalidad, ¿no? al desarrollo de la libre personalidad. Eh, en un segundo tema respecto a la obligación estatal de, de reconocer y proteger los vínculos familiares que emergen de las uniones de parejas del mismo sexo, es importante también precisar que tanto la Constitución Política del Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia y el Código de las Familias establecen al matrimonio y a la unión libre eh, como vínculos jurídicos entre una mujer y un hombre, es decir, tienen una, una limitación conceptual normativa siendo una causal de nulidad si no se produce de esta forma. La Corte Interamericana ha señalado en la opinión consultiva 24 barra 17 que el concepto de familia no puede ser restrictivo a su entendimiento literal o tradicional, hombre y mujer, no existiendo por tanto una definición restrictiva del concepto de familia. Pese a existir este instrumento internacional en Bolivia, las parejas del mismo sexo no cuentan aún con reconocimiento de protección estatal efectiva, tal como se explica a continuación. El año 2019, la pareja constituida por los ciudadanos David Aruquipa y Guido Montaño solicitaron al Servicio de Registro Cívico, CERECI, el registro de su unión libre y de hecho, eh, la cual fue negada inicialmente en base a la normativa señalada. Ante tal negativa, la pareja agotó los recursos administrativos y formularon una acción de amparo constitucional emitiéndose la resolución que concedió la tutela. El registro legal de esta pareja se produjo finalmente en diciembre del 2020, sin embargo, pese a haber transcurrido dos años de la erradicatoria del expediente de este caso en el Tribunal Constitucional Plurinacional, hasta el día de ayer, en la revisión de su sistema de registro de casos, aún no se ha emitido la correspondiente sentencia constitucional, es decir, el proceso de tutela constitucional se encuentra todavía inconcluso. Otro caso emblemático es el de, eh, del ciudadano eh, Leonel Rivas, quien formó un hogar y patrimonio con otro ciudadano y ante su fallecimiento inició el proceso judicial para el reconocimiento de unión libre. Sin embargo, la autoridad jurisdiccional que conoció su caso determinó el rechazo in limine de la demanda argumentando que de la comprobación eh, que la comprobación de la unión eh, libre de la pareja de, del mismo sexo no está permitida pues en el ordenamiento eh, jurídico boliviano infraconstitucional. El ciudadano prestó presentó una acción de inconstitucionalidad eh, concreta eh, recurso también que está pendiente de pronunciamiento. Las personas con diversa orientación sexual e identidad de género en Bolivia se ven limitadas a ejercitar sus derechos en igualdad de condiciones y oportunidades en relación con el resto de la población. Y cuando acuden a la justicia ordinaria, no reciben una efectiva protección. Una protección de parte de esas autoridades llamadas por ley a, eh, a, a tutelar eh, sus derechos, omitiéndose incluso considerar los estándares internacionales que han sido mencionados y la jurisprudencia emitida por el sistema interamericano de derechos humanos. 
a, pues al momento de dirimir y emitir fallos, no se ha tomado el mecanismo de un control de convencionalidad y de esta forma el Estado boliviano incumple su deber de no discriminación y protección de los derechos humanos de las personas LGBTIQ+, limitando el ejercicio de derechos basándose en la orientación sexual o, eh, o la identidad de género, dejándolos en desprotección respecto al resto de la población. La Constitución Política del Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia señala en el artículo 256 que los tratados e instrumentos internacionales en materia de derechos humanos que hayan sido firmados, ratificados o los que hubieran, a los que se hubiese adherido el Estado, que declaren derechos más favorables eh, a, los, a, las, a los contenidos en la Constitución, se aplicarán de manera preferente a esta. Sin embargo, pese a esta previsión constitucional, el Estado plurinacional ha, perpetúa la desigualdad por la inobservancia a la obligación de realizar control de convencionalidad por parte de las juezas y jueces públicos del país hacia un sector de, de la población que ahora estamos nosotros exponiendo en su problemática. Antes de concluir con, con la exposición, eh, señores miembros de la comisión, eh, nos vamos a eh, permitir, conforme lo ha anunciado, otorgar la palabra a dos invitados para que brinden su testimonio. Inicialmente vamos a eh, ceder la palabra a Yawar Castellón eh, y posteriormente a, a Leonel Rivas para que eh, brevemente puedan exponer. So they can present briefly their cases. Good morning, everyone. My name is Castellón Barrial. I represent the collective of trans men in Cochabamba. I'm a trans male. I'm a man recognized by the state of Bolivia thanks to law 807. I consider myself a citizen of Bolivia, even though the state and other social actors have uh, obstructed my way in uh, exercising my own rights. Just like any human being, trans persons have plans, projects, Uh, professional and personal goals that are part of our lives. We comply with rights, we pay uh, taxes, utilities, we are neighbors, sons, daughters, mothers, fathers who are part of the society and contribute to the development of this country. However, despite all of that and the existence of rules such as uh, Act 806, we are far away of considering ourselves uh, citizens are on equal footing without any discrimination. This law from the onset has, its, has been structured to guarantee the full exercise of trans persons' rights. However, the non-compliance with this rule and the attack on the rights ever since 2017 and the in, indifference on the part of the state have created obstacles in the exercise of basic rights such as health, education, work rights, among others. Turning the trans community in the only Bolivian citizens with limited rights in our country. The emotional suffering and the complexity of bureaucracy of, cre of the, um, the processes to change our names may lead to stressful situation and even uh, dropping out of this process, given the discrimination, the lack of protocols for assistance and the, the non-recognition of the law that grants our rights. Due to this negligence, trans persons are more liable to lose job opportunities and education opportunities. One of these examples of the situation is this is what happens with trans persons and marriage trans persons in bolivia are the only persons that cannot be married freely in our country due to our situation given this constitutional sentence however there are much more alarming situations for example the legal interruption of pregnancy in bolivia it is possible to uh, interrupt pregnancy under certain grounds. One of those grounds is when there has been a crime such as a violation. 
However, trans persons that uh, are men legally are not contemplated in this rule. However, on, on the other part, trans parents, trans fathers that have changed their names cannot be registered as fathers in the certificates of their children. They cannot access the Juana Sordu boy in others. So we demand affirmative and policy uh, actions to improve our quality of life. Leonel, you have the floor now. Good morning. I want to thank uh, the opportunity to present my case. My name is Leonel. We, I have been in, in, in a relationship for 20 years. Uh, however, in 2021, my partner died and everything that we have built can be uh, taken away from us. So I presented myself before the court with the expectation that our free uh, or de facto union would be recognized to access all rights and uh, that are that correspond to me. However, despite uh, having different conventions and agreements in my country, which are uh, binding and part of the constitution, of our jurisdiction uh, the court that heard my case rejected my case and ruled against me diverse couples exist in bolivia we are families and we live under our constitution my case is an example of the lack of protection in terms of uh, legal matters. We cannot exercise fully our rights as, for example, as social security rights or benefits such as pensions or the protection of marriage rights in the face of uh, one of the partners dying or in the case of divorce. There is a discrimination and a differentiated treatment towards us only for our way of loving or our uh, orientation. LGBTI persons deserve to live and with the same rights and all and in full enjoyment of all rights. We deserve to be able to form a family and have the right to privacy, the right to not be discriminated, and receive an equal treatment before the law. 11 couples of the same sex so far have not been able to register their union legally at Ceresi. Let us remember that we are uh, awaiting two years of a process that could be uh, go against the recognition of same-sex couples in Bolivia. We live in this uncertainty and LGBTI persons are considered second-class citizens. This is why we come to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights requesting that the state of Bolivia complies with its obligations on, in view of, of the convention of our country. Finally, in view of everything that has been submitted before this commission, we request uh, a recommendation on, on the Bolivian uh, I'm sorry for the interruption, but you ran out of time. I would ask you to please present the risk, the request at the end because uh, we're three minutes um, over. I didn't want to interrupt the civil society representatives, but I request from you that you present your petitions afterwards so that we do not go over time as uh, the hearing was organized. Thank you very much. I give this state 
I give the floor to state representatives. We greet uh, the representative, especially Ambassador Hector Arce. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Good morning. Special greetings to the president of uh, the commission, Julie Samantilla, to Tania Manon, to Tania Renault, also to commissioners, uh, Joel Hernandez, Margaret May, my colleague, and Roberta Clark, and all members of the commissions. I also greet the ombudsperson and the persons of civil society with him. In representation of the Bolivian state, we have the uh, general prosecutor here, Mr. Wilfredo Serrano, and I give the floor to him right now. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I want to first greet uh, Madam President of the Commission, Julissa Mantilla. We also greet the second Vice President of this Commission, Margaret May Macaulay, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, Commissioner Roberta Clark, the Executive Secretary of the Commission. We also greet the assistant uh, secretary, uh, special rapporteur Pedro Vaca and your team. We also greet the ombudsperson of Bolivia and the petitioners and the general audience. As state, we must intervene in this hearing by expressing the honor that we have in participating in this session, which is called the situation of the uh, gender identity and the recognition of same-sex couples in Bolivia, which is key for our country. We must say that the plurinational state of Bolivia and its constitution guarantee the recognition, the res respect, and protection of LGBTIQ rights and the rights of other sectors that demand the recognition of same-sex couple unions. In Bolivia, the identity gender right is exercised on an equal footing. This legitimate demands are in progression so that our state may leave behind any obstacles of uh, prejudice and discrimination and to replace those with a horizon of tolerance and full exercise of those rights. The debate, approval, and uh, enactment of the Act of 2009 has established to set the foundations of this process of tolerance and protection that is translated in rulings and state policies that favor the exercise of the rights that I mentioned before. The political constitution of Bolivia establishes in its Article 8 that the state is based on the values of unity, inclusion, dignity, freedom, solidarity, reciprocity, respect, complementarity, transparency, and equal opportunities, uh, gender equality in the participation, responsibility, social justice, uh, distribution of goods for well being. This is one of the most important values that uh, is part of our constitution. Also, as regards Article 14, Paragraph 2, uh, all discrimination on the basis of gender identity or race are prohibited or other actions that aim at attacking the exercise of any rights on an equal footing. Paragraph three of the same article determines that the state guarantees all collectives without any discrimination, the free exercise of the rights uh, foreseen in the constitution according to the laws that govern our country. The constitution also recognizes in article 256 paragraph one that the international treaties and agreements on in the matter of human rights that have been ratified that declare favorable rights additional to those of the constitution will be applied in uh, as a priority. Paragraph two of this same article ordains that the recognized rights in the constitution will be respected according to international human rights treaties. That is, we 
we respect all those international treaties. In Article 410, in paragraph 2, we see the uh, hierarchy of the Constitution. It reads that the Constitution is the supreme body of laws in the, in the Bolivian state. And the constitutionality block is made up of international treaties in the matter of human rights and community roles, rules ratified by the constitution. So this is the constitutional framework we're basing our actions on. Through this constitutional disposition, uh, a court in La Paz applied the principle of the control of conventionality and rule in favor of same-sex persons that file an amparo uh, motion before Ceresi. We ref will refer to this topic a bit later on. So the Bolivian state recognizes the, uh, the gender identity as a category that is protected by the convention, that the, the constitution, ever since law 807 was enacted in 2016. Article five of this law guarantees trans persons and transgender persons the free exercise of and development of their person according to their gender identity, the non-discrimination, reparation of any damage suffered as a consequence of discrimination, treatment according to their gender identity, and especially to be identified as such, both in public and in private. Respect of their uh, psychological and physical integrity, the exercise of their body autonomy related to the capacity of a person of modifying their body image. Also, the persons with diverse gender orientation is protected. There is a declaration of gender identity and orientation in, 20, in 2008, then the joint declaration to stop acts of violence and human rights violations against this persons on the basis of gender identity and orientation of 2010, resolution approved by the Council of Human Rights on gender identity and sexual orientation in 2011, and the resolution approved by the Human Rights Council on gender identity and sexual orientation in 2014. In the framework of the OAS, the state subscribed until 2016 signed until 2016 eight instruments to recognize human rights of persons with other with diverse gender identity and sexual orientations which is a uh, res resolutions 24 25 2652 2, all of them on the basis of uh, gender identity and sexual orientation. Also the Inter-American Convention Against Racism and Other Types of Intolerance. The Supreme Court of Bolivia enacted resolution to, uh, and a resolution of this year that establishes the rules to change the names of trans persons. This is this has 18 articles and establishes all the steps of the procedure for the change of name and sex data in for trans persons in their birth certificates and their uh, full, uh, full exercise of the gender identity rule. Also, there was an approval of the a document to regulate the procedure to issue identity cards for transgender persons. Between 2016 and 2018, 242 ID cards were issued under that modality. Ceresi also approved the regulation to change name, the name and the sex in birth certificates for transgender persons and 351 uh, birth certificates were issued in the whole country. Also, the Migration Directorate enacted resolution of 2016 and approved the approval to 
to change transgender persons in documents for travel, such as passports and border documents. Also, we enacted resolution of 2016 for the change of data, sex and image data uh, for transgender persons. And through this ruling, we see the procedure to uh, have access of nine different uh, education documents. According to the Ministry of Education, 20 procedures to change this data were granted, 12 of them in the Department of La Paz. According to Act 807, the procedure to change this data for transgender persons in the military documents must be approved through a ministerial um, resolution by the Ministry of Defense. The Ceresi notified the, that there had been more than 400 uh, procedures to change this data in the military documents at a national level. In 2017, 86 of those resolutions. In 2018, 94. In 2019, 95. In 2021, there were there was 100 and in 2021 so far 97 procedures these are pending issuance uh, by request of each person that notified change of sex and name before the Ceresi and are uh, and can do so only one person presented a formal resolution to change their names with all requirements the Ministry of Defense has stated the existence of alternative mechanisms to um, provide services for the motherland. For example, the service of uh, the uh, service for the air forces. Also, there has been a health policy implemented through an integ integral health process which is made up of four approaches to assist patients, human rights, gender, and um, serious conditions. This process of awareness for health professionals will guarantee the implementation of adequate conditions in each of the services in the favor of LGBTIQ persons. The Legislative Assembly has managed different documents to verify the adequate compliance and exercise of uh, gender identity rights. There have been 16 training uh, activities on gender perspective and the rights of LGBTQ rights between 2018 and 20. 20. Also, there is a gender committee, which is a consultancy instance to protect vulnerable group among which we have this population. In 2020, the Constitutional Court of the Department of Justice of La Paz issued resolution 127 in response of a motion of Amparo presented by Perez, who is now who is now a deputy and the court ruled in favor so that there could be a same-sex couple. And the constitutional court support this motion, taking into consideration the jurisprudence of the Inter-American Court and by following advisory opinion 2417, which recognizes same-sex marriage according to the principle of control of conventionality, the state members of the San Jose Pact should guarantee access of homosexual couples to their recognition by the state. Then the Office of Civic Registry, Ceresi, published a resolution that allows for union, free unions of same-sex persons. This is also um, something that was promoted by the Office of the UN. And also, the resolution was started to be applied in 2020. However, 
we know that the resolution in 2020 should be reviewed ex officio by the constitutional court but we know that the resolution is being applied in other areas of the country. So there is some precedent. In October 2021, Andres Fernandez, Ignacio de Caliza used this criminal, uh, the, this um, civil type, uh, in order to guarantee also their access to um, assets in Cochabamba. Also, the Office of the uh, Civic Registry also recorded the union of two women as well. Also in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Dio Figueroa and his partner were recognized their union after they filed a writ of amparo. And this year on September in, the, in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Carlos Peralta and Gerardo Camacho were also recognized their union. And also we see that in La Paz, in September, another couple was recognized their union. In 2020, uh, this year, also a couple that is well known because they participated in several public events also were able to make their union official. And they were hired by the Ministry of Communication as uh, to show that they were a good model or role model. And also, we see that the different offices are trying to apply or to guarantee the right to gender equality. And until the date of drafting of this report, the Office of the Civil Records has recorded 11 unions of persons of the same sex. And there are two which are still pending. And also the same office has recorded so far 572 cases of changes of name. Also the Ministry of Justice together with representatives of the LGBTIQ plus community has prepared two bills. One that has to do with living in family and another that has to do with the exercise of the debt rights and duties of the population of the LGBTI population. These two bills will be presented before the National Assembly as well. Dear commissioners, we have, we hope that we have provided as a state all the information that you need in order to guarantee or to show that the state is trying to guarantee the right to gender identity. Also, as a state commitments, we have assumed based on our constitution, we are using the antecedents that I have just mentioned to show or to prove that the state of Bolivia is promoting access to the right to gender identity and to right to family of LGBTI persons. We are still working to guarantee the full exercise of their rights, but we are on track. The state is assuming the following commitments to systematize the regulations and the administrative procedures that favor the change of name for trans persons. Also, we would like to continue working in interinstitutional groups in order to establish different mechanisms so that the processes to change identity and other related process processes are concluded. Also, the state is going to include a legislative agenda to consolidate the rights of LGBTIQ plus persons. That is the information that we can provide so far during this hearing. We would like to thank you for the opportunity of presenting today. Thank you so much. Now the commission will begin with its intervention. First of all, I would like to give the floor to by second vice president and commissioner Margaret May McCauley. Um, good morning, um, Madam President, um, my dear colleagues, brother and sister, and um, the um, Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, the Executive Secretary and Assistant Executive Secretary, members of the Commission, Vanessa, the expert, um, our experts 
on this these proceedings and the ombuds person and the civil society members present with you um mr ambassador and mr prosecutor prosecutor um good morning all of you and those who are listening online and following these proceedings i will not take up much time because i know we have the rapporteur um, for LGBTI persons here present and uh, country rapporteur, rapporteur as well. I, I must admit I'm in rather a state of confusion because listening to the prosecutor of the state, um, it seems that the, the state is moving forward as it should with deep respect for the rights of um, LGBTI persons in Bolivia. Yet we are here this morning and we have heard from the ombudsperson and the two civil society members who spoke about their personal experiences and of those who they know personally have suffered from discrimination. Um, so I think um, I, I would I would be very happy if the state could clarify why we are here, if what the state has said is in fact being implemented and practiced within the country. Clearly there's some gap or failure somewhere. And, and it would be good if the state could highlight those failures and then specifically say what is being done about them. Um, anyway, I, I will stop there and leave it to my dear sister commissioner to deal with her rapporteurship in greater detail. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Le doy la palabra al relator de Bolivia, Joel Hernández. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to country reporter for Bolivia, Joel Hernández. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning. I would like to kindly greet the Ombudsman. This is the first opportunity that we have to participate together in an event of the ISCHR. We wish you the best in your term. And I also would like to greet the representatives of civil society, the representatives of the state, including the general prosecutor, our the public prosecutor of the Republic, Ambassador Hector Arce and Cecilia Urqueta. I also would like to greet my colleagues who are participating at this hearing. And I think that this is a very interesting hearing. I think that there are many areas of common ground. And I think that this could help improve the rights of LGBTI persons in the country, notwithstanding of what the thematic rapporteur, Commissioner Roberta Clark, can indicate in this matter, I would like to highlight some of the things that I consider of importance. First of all, I think that we need to celebrate that the Constitution of Bolivia includes the principle of equality and non-discrimination. And in addition, we would like to highlight the role that the international instruments have in the Constitution. I think that the fact that these two, in, two elements are included in the most important document of Bolivia are included is so important. We can improve the legislation, the regulations, and the administrative practices and procedures in order to guarantee a real situation of equality um, that protects all persons, including LGBTI persons. I think that there is also a lot of progress made. Law 807 on gender identity is a very important body of law. But at the same time, we have identified some limitations that are not favoring the full exercise or enforcement of this law. Uh, the judgment of 2017, which declared uh, that paragraph inconstitutional it strikes us because it is limiting the full enjoyment of the rights of LGBTI persons. Mm, the information provided by the prosecutor is abundant. 
regarding the number of requests uh, by persons who have requested uh, a change in their name or their records. I think that that's an important step forward. But at the same time, um, civil society members have explained all the barriers that they have faced every time that they have tried to enforce uh, the law on gender equality, because many times we see that this light is not being applied. And as Commissioner May Macaulay was saying, there is a gap that should be bridged. And I would like to listen to the prosecutor and to see how he is going to promote the necessary changes at the National Assembly in order to solve these legal barriers faced by LGBTI persons so far. So I think that it would be very important to know the arguments of the Constitutional Court to declare the inconstitutionality of paragraph two of the law on gender identity and to see if there could be an amendment to the law. Secondly, I have seen that there are important steps forward, for example, the record of free de facto unions between persons of the same sex. But at the same time, there is a still a gap that needs to be bridged. I think that Bolivians will be at a situation of equality and non-discrimination when in Bolivia, same-sex marriage is enacted, is promoted, because now same-sex persons can have access to a free de facto union. I think that it's important at the same time that same-sex marriage is possible. And this is one of the aspects that lead to necessary amendments of the law. And I also, I am also happy to see the impact of advisory opinion 2417, uh, the Inter-American Court and the control of conventionality conducted by the different public entities. So to conclude, I see we, I see that there is a situation in which there are important progress made in terms of the legislative power, but there are still some gaps that need to be eliminated. And now I have a question that is for the state authorities and for the ombudsman. I would like to know in the meantime, which are the administrative practices that are being followed to guarantee both the rights of trans persons and LGBTI persons in general to guarantee those rights? Which administrative practices are being followed? How easy is for them to have access to ID cards? We have the number here, but I'm not sure the complexities and the administrative complexities that these persons face to access said documentation. Improving the rights of LGBTI persons implies an effort to tackle prejudice, stigmatization, and for that, the state has a role, it should create awareness and it should train public servants within the state so that there is no prejudice when they enforce the regulations that exist. So my question has to do with the, the actions taken by the state at an administrative level to guarantee the respect of the rights of LGBTI persons as a whole. Thank you so much, Madam President. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Roberta Clark. Thank you very much, uh, um, 
¿Cómo se llama? ¿Sí? ¿Can you hear me bien? Well? Sí, perfecto. Muy bien. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. I want to uh, join uh, the commissioners in uh, saying good morning uh, to everyone who is participating in this hearing. And I want to thank the ombudsperson and the representatives of civil society for their elaboration of the issues uh, related to the rights, access to the rights of LGBTI persons in Bolivia. I also want to recognize Ambassador Arce as well as the general prosecutor. And thank you very much for the information that you have provided. I have to say, like uh, Commissioner uh, Margaret May McCauley um, uh, and also by Commissioner Hernandez, listening to the um, listening to the representations this morning um, was both, uh, both contained, gave me a, a lot of satisfaction and happiness, but also concern. I want to uh, acknowledge that it seems to me that Bolivia has a very strong constitutional arrangement recognizing uh, especially the rights to equality and non-discrimination. I, I am heartened by the incorporation of uh, international human rights treaties within the constitutional framework uh, of, of Bolivia. I'm, I'm also um, quite uh, uh, heartened by the existence of a legislative framework which recognizes the right to gender identity and conformity with the Inter-American Human Rights Standards, and in particular, the advisory opinion uh, 2417. And I, I also hear very clearly the representatives of the state speaking to the range of measures which have been taken to recognize gender identity, and not only to recognize the formality of gender, the right to gender identity, but also the, the implications for access to social, economic, political, and cultural rights. Um, General Prosecutor, you mentioned a whole range of areas where um, the right to gender identity has been incorporated, whether it's in the health sector, in the military. Um, you mentioned a, a range of, of areas, uh, recognition of same-sex unions. So it seems to me that there is a strong formal, formal um, recognition of the rights of LGBTI persons. And, you know, we have the there can be, and I think that's a, a global issue, a bit of a dissonance or a disconnect between formal recognition of rights and the access, people's access to the rights. Um, because of course, there's a gap between laws and practice. And I, I also very much understand from what the ombudsperson has said and uh, Mr. Rivas and Mr. Castillon, that there, it is quite variability in how people can access those rights depending on, on where they are. Um, and I want to therefore ask maybe there's a two or three questions, one which is more for learning for me. I, I note that the court, um, in relation to how it has interpreted uh, law 807, I think it is that um, the constitutional ruling 76 of 2017, which declared unconstitutional paragraph two of article 11, restricting the application of the article only to the change of identity uh, without covering more rights. Now, what I want to ask in relation to, just so that I understand the jurisprudence, what is the effect of this uh, constitutional ruling? And what is the, and does the general guarantee, constitutional guarantee to equality and non-discrimination mitigate the effects of this constitutional ruling. In other words, I would like to understand the relationship between this constitutional ruling and the general uh, constitutional provisions around equality and, and uh, non-discrimination. I also recognize that um, there is, as I said, a gap between the law and the enforcement. And I recognize, um, General Prosecutor, as you've completed your presentation, you made a number of commitments, which I think if implemented may address some of the issues which are raised by the um, representatives of civil society. The, the first that you talked about systematizing the change of name and gender identity across the country, the development of inter-institutional coordination frameworks, which I think is uh, seems to be something that's quite needed to address this gap between law and, and implementation. And thirdly, a legislative agenda to consolidate the rights of LGBTI persons. 
In relation to that legislative agenda, can you maybe uh, share with us what are the elements of this legislative agenda which are, are planned to consolidate the rights of LGBTI persons? Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Clark. I have some specific questions. I think that my colleagues have covered most of the topics, but I have a question regarding intersectionality. We are talking about the situation of LGBTIQ plus persons in general, but I would like to know the intercultural and intersectional approach that you are having. I'm thinking about LGBTI persons from different communities, indigenous communities, etc. I would like to know the response that the state has in these cases. Um, sometimes there is kind of a confrontation, that's not the word, but there is a lack of understanding or perspective. So I would like to know the policies that a state has. And also I would like to know if civil society and the ombudsperson has some examples regarding this intersectionality. I also would like to know, the uh, to thank the state for all the list of public policies and measures that they are implementing. But I would like to know what are you doing in terms of comprehensive educational or sex education? Uh, are you providing education to trans men? Um, this is not only about training public servants or health serve um, professionals. I'd like how, to know how you are addressing comprehensive sexual education in general terms. And I don't know if we have more questions. Uh, I have more questions, but I will make only one more. I would like to ask you about political participation. We know that everything that has to do with identity is only a dimension of rights. But I would like to know what happens with those people who have no access to the recognition of their name on their IDs. I'm thinking about the rights to participate in politics because maybe these issues regarding the change of name or IDs, sometimes people are not able to participate in politics or sometimes members or persons of the LGBTI community are not able to participate in electoral processes. Uh, Commissioner May McCauley is requesting the floor, so we have two minutes. Commissioner, you can go. Thank you, Madam President. I, 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 I do apologize. I forgot to mention the fact that as Rapporteur for the Rights of Afro-Descendant Persons, I, I do wish to understand how they are treated in this gap that I said clearly exists uh, within in the implementation of the laws and constitutional rights that everyone in Bolivia is presumed to have under the constitution, because they generally face discrimination for who they are. And so I, it, if the, uh, the Mr. Leonard prosecutor could give us some highlights about the treatment of Afro-descendant persons who are uh, within the LGBTI community in Bolivia. Thank you. Thank you. We only have one minute left. I can give the floor to Rapporteur Pedro Vaca. He has a question. Thank you, Madam President, and greetings to everyone. Oh, a specific question for the Ombudsperson. Do you have any examples as regards uh, public spokespersons or uh, that may be applying stereotypes and may be up, uh, hindering the gender identity enjoyment and also for the state, do you consider that it's uh, appropriate to raise awareness for public officials as regards stereotypes so that the public discourse may also uh, guarantee human rights? Thank you. Thank you. Then I give back the floor to the Ombudsperson and Civil Society representatives for the rest, the remainder of the time for this hearing. You have the floor. Thank you very much. There have been some specific questions addressed to the Ombudsperson and others that would be important for us to address as well, to give you an answer. First, what would be the practices as regards administration, with regard to the access 
to certain services such as change of identity and health and education. The truth is that we uh, welcome Ceresi, the Office of Vital Records, uh, for having issued uh, a normative a ruling, but as we have uh, stated before, this law, law 807, can, can be translated into a change of identity. However, there are other environments where we see problems, specifically in the area of education, because when a person starts the procedure to uh, regularize their identity and make their identity official, they do not they do not face homogeneous rulings on the part of education as institutions. So they have to start that procedure uh, from scratch as if they were uh, demanding uh, an original document, that is. Also, as regards health services, the services are limited when persons want to access special uh, areas such as urology and gynecology because despite the law being implemented there is no internal regulation being implemented specifically as regards the national health uh, budget so these are the two levels of uh, serious lack of application which hinder an appropriate and adequate access to health services and also to access of uh, to education rights. Another topic that is very important for us to address and make visible is the issue of, uh, cons of constitution. It's true that there was a constitutional empire which has translated into the free registration of same-sex si same couples. This is in, in transit to become consolidated because we only have one intermediate court decision at the moment and it's pending to see if the plurinational constitutional court will uh, decide on this issues and this is key because the jurisprudence of this entity um, has to do with the binding nature of the ruling. So this decision has been pending for for many years, and this should recognize the international standard of protection of this person. Only this way we would be able to monitor to see if the, these rights are protected. So there are two constitutional processes that are pending on the part of the constitutional court. On the other hand, we first stated that we value the progress in terms of rules on the part of the state of Bolivia. And as the general prosecutor has uh, stated himself, we value the different international uh, treaties that are being implemented. However, we must bridge the gap between the formal recognition and the practice as regards the guarantee of the rights of this collective we are addressing today. This is why we request from the commission to pronounce itself as regards the following, that there is a rec recommendation to the state of Bolivia so that it guarantees the full enjoyment of gender identity of trans persons, acknowledging all rights that emerge from I their identity, the free exercise of their personality and their life projects. Also, that the state of Bolivia recognizes and protects family bonds emerging from same-sex couples or persons with diverse gender identity on an equal footing as regards rights and obligations as with uh, heterosexual couples. Also to request from the Plurinational Assembly Constitution to 
comply with international standards in with regard to human rights with the aim of guaranteeing the exercise of all fundamental rights without any discrimination to persons with diverse gender identity and or sexual orientation to recommend the adjustment of rulings to the inter-american system of human rights protection and to comply with international treaties imagine from the agreements that were ratified by the state of Bolivia to apply the principle of conventionality. And finally, to recommend all judges and magistrates that are part of the judiciary that in their competences control conventionality by verifying internal rules and their application and compliance with the Inter-American Convention and other human rights instruments so that there is a correct implementation of standards and state obligations are met. There are rules, rule uh, progressions in, in terms of rules. However, the there is no practical implementation that is homogeneous and this should not lead to citizens being tied to, to such bureaucracy. We congratulate and we welcome the state's intention to have a priority as regards addressing the consolidation of these rulings and to have groups to work on these rules to protect the rights of transgender and transsexual persons and so that this may be consolidated in the cons uh, legal constitutional agenda but these are an example of what the limits are right now the this lack of sufficiency in the application and fundamentally in the exercise of the transgender and transsexual rights Thank you. You have two minutes left if you want to make any more comments. Yes, uh, I would like to give the floor to um, to my colleague here. It's important to see what is happening, how this affects trans persons. The constitutional sentence in, uh, impedes person from accessing same-sex uh, marriage, we are seeing this sort of unions, but trans persons uh, lack this uh, right. And this is a serious uh, infringement of our rights. There was a question as regards our participation in terms of politics. Well, this constitutional sentence uh, prevents trans persons from participating in politics. So a trans person cannot be a part of a political party because persons cannot vote for us because we lack this sort of participation. We don't have the, the right to adoption either. So the constitutional sentence is affecting our rights directly because when there is marriage, we can access uh, rights such as health or uh, capital rights. The state knows that there have been bills that have tried to, to uh, correct the situation, but there have not been any efforts towards this goal. There is no open mind attitude and we are not given solutions despite having this uh, sentence for over five years. So we want to know what are the specific actions on the part of the state to recover our rights. Thank you very much for your participation. Now we give the floor to the state representatives for 13 minutes because you had not used up all your time before. Thank you. Once again, my greetings to everyone. We have taken down notes of the different comments and, address and questions. Some of those questions require from us that we gather more information to answer in a specific way. But my initial response would be to 
state that, first of all, we must uh, be based on a basic principle of the Constitution, a principle that allows to establish that rights, uh, to establish the, the guarantee of rights in a gradual manner. We had before a discriminatory disc uh, uh, state, a state that did not recognize the rights of groups such as the L the LGBTIQ persons before, these rights were non-existent for the constitution before. So under that, uh, in that framework, we have devoted our time to establish public policies emerging from the constitution and state and national rules that have allowed us gradually, of course, to implement the rights for this community and the rights that are being demanded by the petitioners at this hearing. There is a progressive advancement in the right uh, to identity. However, we must recognize that there are state challenges uh, still that we must address. So it's important to underscore that there are new proposals as regards rules that have been drafted by the Ministry of Justice and institutional transparency and the LGBTI community and other sectors of the society. Also, the state, under this uh, principle of progressiveness, which is also set forth in the Constitution, is working in a coordinated manner to draft public policies. However, we must, of course, work through CDC, through the Office of Vital Records, which has implemented the control of conventionality through different internal rulings to uh, give a response to all requests submitted, taking into account that all public officials must implement uh, the protection of rights of all persons according to our political constitution. That is, we are working under a constitutional framework, a conventional framework, and we of course can say that there are problems, and this is why we are committed, as we said before, to seeing that there is a debate as regards rules through public policies in the um, National Assembly. We cannot, of course, uh, close our eyes in the face of the reality of, the, of this constitutional sentence you mentioned. This sentence has presented some solutions. However, it has also have uh, um, referred the debate to the body that is competent in this case, the assembly. So this debate is still pending at the National Legislative Assembly. There have been several obstacles. You know that our country has uh, undergone the pandemic as every other country, but also exceptionally, we have had a de facto government that has, uh, had, has hindered the exercise of the rights. So we cannot deny this. This uh, authoritarian government has stopped uh, progressive advancement we had before. And we are now taking up that agenda, as I said before. The constitutional sentence must, as I understand, must be worked on and the by the competent body so all the uh, declarations we s we make as a state cannot be understood uh, outside the constitutional framework. Of course, we have presented uh, a demand before the authorities of the state, but we can we are not competent to tell the constitutional body that they should treat something that is not under their own competences. Of course, we must uh, implement the convention and the constitution. So we thought, so we think that this is how the procedure, procedure must go. Also, progress has been very important. The data I presented are official data and even some of them have not been updated uh, for this year, but this is sufficient information that proves that there have been several uh, advancements 
ever since 2016 in this matter. We know that we are living in a world, particularly in Bolivia, where we see different challenges and we would like to uh, provide an answer to the other questions presented via writing, but nevertheless, we must say that our state is inclusive. We have breaking, breaking away from an, a discriminatory and exclusive state. So, of course, we take, do, we take note of the requests made by the civil society and the ombudsperson, which is also a constitutional authority. And so under this uh, democratic debate, we understand we will make progress in this matter. We know this is an effort that we have to make on a daily basis, but of course we have been working for human rights and people who know us know of this of our history as uh, ambassador Hector Arce. We are uh, fighting for this. Sometimes implementing public policies take, takes a long, a long time, but we are willing to provide an answer to the, to the requests presented today, and we will com comply with our commitments, of course, to uh guarantee the rights in the specific bodies this is all i wanted to say and thank you for the time that you granted us thank you very much i give the floor to ambassador arsenal thank you madam president special greetings to commissioner roberta clark i apologize i hadn't seen you before and also to special reporter pedro vaco vaca First of all, I wanted to highlight the positive nature of these hearings. I remember that I had to, to be part before the pandemic, I had to be part of several hearings. And I remember Commissioner Joel Hernandez at the time uh, leading such constructive uh, sessions. So we thank the Ombudsperson's office for having us here to really debate such important issues uh, such as this one. So what are what the state representatives have explained is very important. And I wanted to supplement that information, which is a reflection, an example of a line of action that has been maintained by the state of Bolivia throughout time, even though, of course, we had this constitutional uh, setback, which has deeply affected the guarantee of several rights. However, there has been a transformation of political and social circumstances, and the transformation as regards the human rights validity, which is the implementation of pro progressive policy. In different events, for example, recently at the OAS General Assembly and the Summit of the Americas in Los Angeles, our country was part of groups with the most progressive countries and the most advanced countries in the matter of human rights. We are working within the inter-American system to fight over several, several matters to make progress in such key issues, which has been a flag for us as, as it was presented before. We were part of the constitutional process and this was one of the core issues. And over one decade, afterwards those who have participated are happy to see what a, all the progress that we have made i wanted to specifically focus on an issue that is important to uh, taking into account that we have the presence of four commissioners and the executive secretariat in bolivia there is a constitutional sentence as it was mentioned by uh, commission by the commissioners we have a constitutional system that is in development and has been developed beyond this constitutional sentence that is beyond this time 
uh, later sentences have developed are three articles 13 article 13 that reads in paragraph four that international agreements ratified by the state that recognizes human rights prevail in the internal uh, order and the rights and obligations will be interpreted in accordance with international human rights uh, treaties ratified by Bolivia. This is one of the first articles that establishes the obligation to interpret this in view of international human rights treaty, treaties ratified by the state. But the most important article is 256. This article 256 is key and is being implemented by the Constitutional Court with the several challenges that we have observed, but it is a proof of the intention of the state of Bolivia to make progress in the application, the priority application of international treaties in matter of human rights. I will read this article because it's very important that the commission knows this. The international treaties in the matter of human rights that have been ratified by the state of Bolivia that declare human rights favorable, that are more favorable than those uh, contained in this constitution will be applied in a preferent manner. So I want to uh, highlight two, two parts, preference and over. So we have international treaty that establishes the rights for a person and we have the constitutional text. On the other hand, the constitutional mandate what is developed in sentences that are uh, after the this constitutional sentence we were referring to indicate that we have to preferently apply the international treaties over the other. This is why these two terms are very important, pref preference and over. So this is a very advanced legislation which allow, allows us to make progress to achieve a constitutional state where what is prevalent is human rights in understanding that the international set of international treaties also indicate this and the Inter-American Commission interprets those. Uh, I, I'm running out of time, but I thought this was a very important thing that we should have, uh, we should highlight the, here. Thank you. We are reaching the end of this hearing, and I would like to start by thanking. I would like to start by thanking the state of Bolivia for being here. Not all the states are here, and these hearings are a space of exchange and monitoring. As Ambassador Arce was saying, we had had the opportunity of discussing this progress. Now we are lacking the implementation, and as always, the Commission is at your disposal for supporting you with the application of these processes. And also, I would like to greet and thank the Ombudsman for your new mandate. It's good to see you together with civil society members. Uh, civil society is, for the Commission, very, very relevant. The Inter-American Court, in its advisory opinion, said this, non-discrimination should include not only uh, gender identity, but also gender orientation and gender orientation. I would like to thank Mr. Rivas and Mr. Castellón you are a Quechua, Mr. Rivas, if I'm not right or wrong. So I re recall a book that is of Andean origin, and we are both of Andean origin. And I would like to recognize the complexities that LGBTI persons are still facing the different stories of people who have suffered discrimination and long their lives. We have heard uh, about stories of dignity and struggle. 
uh, the commission is for, here for you. We would like to thank you, to support you, and we would like to know you that the LGBTI community includes many persons, for many girls, boys that are still there. This is also a symbol and a message for them as well. I would like to thank you, all of you, for being here. Have a very nice day. Goodbye.